This is London with Bitcoin Spike and VIP Trader. We hope you are doing well today. Let's dig into the details on the New York Open. We're going to leave off the list Tesla and NVIDIA. Okay, in terms of that breakout, really Tesla, I'm interested up, up and over 250 on a technical basis. You guys know on that bull flag. Now, in terms of Bitcoin, Bitcoin got a great drop. We were what, guys? We were bearish under. You guys got that right. Bearish or short underneath. Uh, $44,000. Uh, so that worked out quite well for all of us. Excited to see a nice, nice drop. And you know, we had been preparing for that psychologically through the entirety of this run up being long over, short under. It's as easy as a breakout strategy. I just want to reconfirm that it's as easy as seeing a pattern that you love and saying, hey, I want to trade this breakout. It's just saying that in addition to trading a breakout, we also want to catch the downside of the market to the extent that that's the minority position of the market. We're going to take the minority. We want those uh, guys extra gains. We want that alpha. All right. In terms of where we're at this morning, CPI came in just as expected. If you were paying attention to that, let's look at our 42 thousand dollar level if you caught this if you didn't let's talk about a few specifics in, in terms of bitcoin and what are the overall considerations i'm going to bring in a let's just refocus on the pattern in question would be uh, i'd say a a deep dig v shape cup and handle these become cup and handles all you need to do is stretch them out that's the way that these work guys they've been trading quite a bit and we got a lot of I'd say benefit from looking at the equities to pull these into the framework of crypto. So that pattern exposure on the open has been uh, dynamic. Okay, it's been very nice. Check out the 15 minute to 45 minute just to take a look, guys. Uh, the hourly nearly uh, on NVIDIA, I barely want to mention it. Look at the cross dynamics between the volatility expression and the uh, and what, guys? The volatility expression and uh, which would be bullish and the bearish, uh, the specific bear flag that's in place. So I'll just say we have some uh, some conflict on NVIDIA right now, just con conflicted technicals. We're not going to cover it for that reason right now. And Tesla is just down and under uh, the zone that I wanted to go to. Where is uh, where is uh, Tesla exactly? And you guys know I was waiting for that breakout up and over to get into the hot zone on a bull flag. Just, just look at the pattern so we can apply it again to our Bitcoin trades, period. But looking at this pattern, move to the upside downward sloping channel. You see we have been sideways for how long? We've just been sideways for... Uh, guys, for almost a month. So deep digs and pickup, we can apply this to Bitcoin right now, believe it or not. But looking at a month sideways, uh, we need our money to move, right? We got to get into something that's either going to uh, pay on the chop here in terms of swing trades, which we're not huge fans of in terms of uh, Bitcoin's going to win this argument eight days a week because Bitcoin doesn't close. Okay, so we don't have to wake up and be surprised at all. But as you see that month line gr long grind, uh, this was the move. Boom. This was the move. Boom. This is not the move on, big, on, 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 on Tesla. Now, as we look at this sideways consolidation for one month on Tesla, nothing's changed. We still want a nice entry up and over level of resistance. Fact. Uh, we just don't want to let the, you know, let, the, let the house ride with the cash. We go sit down and, you know, it's like a, we're over depositing at the casino. It's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not getting any return on, on what's going on here, unless you're ricocheting back and forth on a swing trade. But we know there's no reason to park extra cash with the, uh, with, with the house, guys. There's just no reason to park that uh, extra cash with the house. Casino analogy, right? You sit down, you want to play, you want some action. I'm going to let you just hold on, to, uh, hold, on to the, hold on to the bank in the meantime. So we like to get out up and over, boom, on accelerated moves. Bam, boom, boom. We like these accelerated moves. Let's get into a position where we're looking at some momentum. Bottom line, take the technical feature and erase the fact that it belongs to a security. We don't handle securities, guys. You know that. Uh, in terms of the details of Bitcoin, now 42 over under, 42,000 over under is easy to say, maybe not always easy to execute, right? Because you've got multiple levels. If we're looking at 42, which is our level right now, uh, looking at wanting this 42 to break to the upside, uh, clearly, we have a pattern in play on Bitcoin. Clearly, that we want, uh, guys, we, we, you can take a screenshot of these specific patterns to the upside up and through. I'll leave it alone for a minute. Bam, snapshot that in terms of potential targets to the upside. 23.6 is going to be a level here, that 42,000. 
42,425. Each of these technically will be a micro over or under threshold to reach. Let's revisit something very important. Let's revisit this very important feature that, uh, that we were looking at in terms of uh, we spent a lot of time on this, and I hope it's sinking in to the extent that you're getting an appreciation for the levels of sophistication that you're, uh, and complication, right, that you're able to bring into uh, the mix with your execution. The bottom line is this, 786, uh, 44764, looking at your target to the upside, looking at a full completion maxed out on Bitcoin cup and handle, right, looking at the specifics here, what was a prominent, uh, prominently discussed front and center specific requirement was to clear these hurdles up and over. So just as in the breakout pattern would include, uh, guys, a threshold entry up and over, down and under, it protected us at that 786 from saying, no, but we want, hey, we are expecting, we need, right, Bitcoin to go up that extra 40 $8,000 mark. That's where we have to go. We're not dependent on full completion, right? This is a painful drop to the extent that you've caught it. It's an awesome trade. Congratulations. I know uh, that you caught it. So congratulations. We caught it. Way to go. Way to go. So that's 786. And again, looking at the features of the maximized target to that 100% full amplitude carry up. Boom. You got it right now. Looking at uh, the specifics on a larger time frame, you would actually mitigate those just a touch, right? We would pull those down in line with the actual lines. So they, we would lessen those targets just a bit, particularly like on the weekly, on a larger time frame with less volatility. Let's look at the weekly real quickly on the lines. Lines are always going to be more conservative. They show less volatility. You got that right. So looking at the lines, let's see if I can pull this down if it'll let me. There we go. But on the actual lines on the weekly, where were we at? Boom. Yeah, on the lines on the weekly, we hit into the full 100%, right? On the wick, I'll just say we did. Let's see and let's verify that. Uh, yeah, bam, right into that level within a few bucks. Now, yesterday we were talking about what? The hit on the 20 moving average. Indeed, the 20 moving average on the daily. You guys want to dig into that real quickly. Let's take a look at what, um, what Bitcoin has done. Now, the differentiation and difficulty. Let's talk about the difficulty. It was we had a four-hourly... Uh, nice oversold condition pickup. Those typically will play well to the upside or they will retest. So it's a difficult, it's definitely not an all in situation on the specific. It looks like Tesla and Nvidia, just a note, looks like the market's uh, on a little bit of a slide. At least Tesla and Nvidia, is that the, uh, uh, yeah, Tesla and Nvidia, not, not looking too happy, right? Just a note the New York Open. But looking at a four hour pickup, you say, well, I want to hit every four hour. I'm just going to hit them. That's fine until they domino down and require the daily to go and take a dip into over uh, sold territory. You know how these work. They will cascade between the lower to higher time frame. So you've got to keep a very cautious tactical eye on this. I've released this indicator, guys. Happy holidays. And uh, I know that you will uh, use this. It'll be beneficial on pour downs, particularly this uh, multi time frame. Uh, this will be the, let me see if I can pull this down, multi time frame, uh, colored and labeled with gradient. It's just going to allow you to see the specific multi time frame dynamics of RSI, relative strength index. That should be a very useful tool uh, for you as you, uh, as you look at uh, participating in the market. Bitcoin, you guys got that right. So uh, let's, uh, let's just note the fact that ideally this is the mental crutch that we've got right now. We just hit oversold on the four hourly, on the hourly with the big pour down. We got the short, great. Now what's the question? Well, the question is, We'd really like to get up into overbought territory. We need bulls to engage, right? I mean, that's, that, that's what's got us holding on mentally, true? I mean, that was a rare event to have the four hourly pour down. We're, we're happy to have that in an uptrend. Yeah, so what's going on with the traders right now? Well, the daily, uh, daily 20 moving average was the, the question yesterday. How close did we get? Now, this has snapped on perfectly. How close were we? Okay, we looked at some exchange figures, et cetera. We were within 0.33%. True? You guys measured up. You've got the details in the back, but we got within 0.33% to be precise, right? $100, uh, give or take, a little bit more. $100, give or take. So 
when we look at this pickup, uh, we prefer the direct hits. We are looking at a little suspiciously here, Tesla. Tesla likes to play around like this. True, yes. So we noted that yesterday, got nearly a perfect hit. Still wasn't a perfect hit on the line. You guys got that, right? We were watching that level. You had to play aggressively 0.3%. Uh, so the market's telling you, you want to technically trade, we're going to charge you for it. That's it. You want to technically trade, we're going to charge you for it. That's not my preference. That is not how I would want uh, my name in the uh, scorecard or on, on, on the desk if I were in charge of the technicals for an asset. I would reward individuals who want to trade technically and not have my name somewhere in the background saying, yeah, I'm going to charge these people who want to, uh, who, who want to, who want to trade technically. Mm, it's a small group who can as proficiently trade as technically as we do. And to the extent that that's going to be interrupted or frustrated outside of the uh, guys, outside of the norm, it's just not something we look, we, we look forward to uh, seeing more of. So in terms of the technicals, we have what? We do have, uh, first of all, in the back, trying to get in touch with how close we were. I just don't, impre I, I don't, I don't like not getting orders picked up on a 20 moving average. It's literally institutional. It's literally bedrock institutional. And you're just going to have to start asking, well, who picked those trades up? And the more that you ask those questions, the asset, the uh, guy is just clouded with a bit of a, 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 there's a cloud of suspicion on it. It just is, and there's no reason for that, right? Uh, and that's not to say it's beyond regulatory framework controls. At that point, it needs to be regulated. I would argue the opposite. I would argue there's too much control. I would argue there's too much manipulation already at whatever desk decides to sign off on, well, I don't know that that thing needs to hit the 20 moving average. You guys think CZ is in charge of that? I really don't think so. I really would argue that CZ is not in charge of whether or not it hits the 20 moving average across all the platforms. That would just be my, uh, my well-educated guess. Fact check me. Go ahead and fact check me. Now, beyond all of the commentary, okay, beyond all the commentary, aside from someone at a technical desk in charge of, a, of, of an asset saying, well, I think uh, such and such and such and such have just made enough money today. Or in the past 48 hours, I think they've made enough money. We don't need to give them another pickup on the 20 moving average. You know, you can do that short term and feel like a king and feel like a boss long term. Somebody, I'm just going to tell you, whoever's name that is, is on a list somewhere on a control program. I just say that, guys, on a control list or otherwise. Whoever's making that decision, okay, in terms of favoring or paying certain individuals and not paying other individuals, I hope they really have it lined out technically themselves. I hope they're the absolute best technically and can literally get in the ring technically, mathematically, period, with anybody that's participating in the market and that they deserve that seat to where they're looking at a 20 moving average being like, yeah, we're just not going to pay these, these and we're not going to pay these. And whoever it is, I hope they hold their own and I doubt seriously that they do. So that's the reason for my commentary. We don't get orders picked up on the 20. Can we catch it? Sure, we can catch it. Did we book perfect on a short? Yes, yeah, sure we did. We did. But if they're going to roll at the market and there's going to be some chap or lad in a seat that's not going to pick up across USDT or USD and play games and shenanigans, all I'm going to say is I am on the record that I hope that they can roll literally with the number one guys in the market, because that's what we try, and, we try and do. And to the extent that it's, it, 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 it's a manipulative event or otherwise, and it's a judgment call, if someone's making that judgment call of picking up on the 20 moving average or not, you're just gonna hear it from me, guys. You know how technically we, we approach Bitcoin, how technically we, we approach the markets, and to the extent that there is a, a, just you know, a, a level of, of discretion it's not discretion, it's a technical. It's literally a technical component of the market. It doesn't need to be adjusted. So whoever, however, would listen to, I'm sure and certain, specific commentary as it relates to the market, you better step it up. I'm not talking to VIP, I'm talking to the guys, gals, or maybe just an international hocus pocus dynamic. Why wouldn't the 20 moving average pick up? It might just be an international hocus pocus dynamic. Who knows? It's going to remain a mystery, right? 
Yeah, we were born yesterday. It's fantastic. We were just born yesterday. So we're up for any answer that anyone would like, would like to throw at us. There you go. We were just born yesterday. It's fantastic. I'm reinforcing in a bit in an invigorated fashion what? I want and I need, guys, and we, we, we deserve for the hours that we put in a technical framework that we can rely upon and the assets that we focus on with all of the time and energy and effort that we put in on an individual basis into the markets, we expect and we deserve to have things like the New York Institute of Finance for their books to ring true, Library of Congress materials, not to just be disregarded, okay, in the operation of the markets. Why? Because we reinforce the markets on the whole and on the entirety in line with how great they have been over the decades and hundreds of years. This is not a weekly issue or an hourly issue. We don't get a technical conformance here. Well, who cares? We regard our participation in the market exactly in line with what? In line with the hundreds of years. Okay, the hundreds of years of, of esteem and integrity that go into the markets. And so when we see a technical quote unquote glitch, and we see something that can't quite be explained. And when I start to talk about, well, if anyone is at a desk and anyone decides that they should override a specific, yes, guys, let me see what we've got on Bitcoin here. Four hour green byline. Four hour green byline. To any extent to which, okay, there is a specific small group or individual who decides to override based upon supposition, hypothetical, or, or fem, uh, what do we say, Flim, we say flimsy, whim, or fancy, whatever it may be, to contravene the New York Institute of Finance, to contravene like the entirety, as you would look at back testing over the last like 60, 70, 80 years, that's when I have a personal issue with it. That's when I want to be on the record and say, step it up, and not to you guys, but to the constituent frameworks behind the markets, right? And I want to inspire those. If I have to get their attention, et cetera, whatever it is, in whatever fashion, respectively, right? You're not gonna find me uh, chasing someone down a hallway. This is just VIP time, guys. But on the tail end, we know 42 over under. On, on the tail end of what? On the tail end of, uh, of, of uh, some nice trades, yes. But when we get into the unexplained zone, Right? When we get into, in, into technical matters that just can't be explained, you know, if we can light a bit of a, a, a bit of a, uh, uh, just a, you know, th this is our technical rain dance. That's just it. It's our technical rain dance, bottom line. It's not, certainly not anti-establishment, okay? Just so that you know, it is certainly nothing to do with a occupy what? Brainless. Occupy what? You know, the, 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 I, I see, and you guys know, well, this is just the morning stream, here we go, but we see what? An Occupy Wall Street. Are you kidding me? That's not the camp that I'm in. I'm just not, guys. I never will be. I love Wall Street, right? When I see people who want to fight the Fed with hats on and everything else, do what? Like, I'm the biggest fan of Wall Street. Like, no, the Fed is the glue that keeps this whole thing going, right? I'm a big fan of all of that. And so when I see situations that cause an element of concern or friction or seems to be devised or otherwise away from the bedrock principles of the market, yeah, it's going to be me trying to reinforce how great the market is, trying to reinforce how manipulation does not does not belong. It doesn't make any sense. This is the embarrassing part. It doesn't make sense. You've got a demand function on a 20 moving average on the daily and someone long term is going to have to explain why. Well, with a literal, literal truckload, blocks full of truckloads of orders on the 20 moving average, there just wasn't enough demand to pick it up. Really? And someone's going to have to stand behind that. I mean, whoever it would be, whoever would be in charge of saying, no, we, you know, we, 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 we don't need to operate with supply and demand here. We just don't. We, you know, that's, 
Uh, we, we, we forgot that, uh, that chapter in the book on, on basic economics. We, you know, we, guys, there's just a reason that I want to reinforce the positive framework technically of the market. I really do. So that's my commentary when we're 0.33% off on picking up orders on a 20 moving average on the daily. Enough said, but said nonetheless. And the challenge to people who might have made that possible, a challenge to the people who might have made that possible, some sort of unexplained was a 0.33% off. These people did and those people didn't and this group might and this group won't get picked up on their orders. Reinforce the technical framework of the market. Reinforce your participation in the market technically. And this is the main driver for us. Okay, as we look at a situation where you were 0.33% off on a pickup on the daily 20 moving average, this is where it doesn't get personal. All of my commentary, out the window. What's the reinforcement for us? Who are we? We focus on the New York Institute of Finance. True? Yes. We focus on Bukowski. Shout out to Tom, big Tom, hope you're doing well. Appreciate all the correspondence. Yes, we focus on the primary authorities in terms of technical analysis in the market. We'll continue to focus on the primary drivers, the primary authorities of technical analysis in the market. And if I ever come across anything or any situation, and this is just me, you guys have to appreciate this, and it is well appreciated. Whether or not it's the leader of the local Morgan Stanley office or Goldman Sachs regional division, or guys, whoever, in, in any context, if they don't know, I'm going to tell them. I'm the guy that's going to tell them. All right? That's just who I am. That's who I enjoy being in that regard. And so if, and to the extent, any type of an education, certainly for education, this one, huh? But you shouldn't have to, we shouldn't have to dance around or educate around a fact of a technical component and reinforce the fact, uh, hello, those books are in the Library of Congress. They're in the Library of Congress. So in terms of the reliance, we're going to continue to rely on the framework. We're going to continue to expect that our orders on a 20 moving average get picked up. That's just it. There is a demand function in line with the markets. You know, that's, you know, I just don't like the idea that people would be, be sitting and sweating and not picking, up a, uh, not picking up a trade on the 20 moving average. On the, on, guys, on, on the daily? Come on. Let people trade, especially the, the traders who are highly technical. Let them trade, guys. So enough said. You guys get it. But who's trading? You're trading. I'm trading. We're trading. So to the extent that I see just aberrations that could or not just be on our screen, tell you the honest truth, unless we go do our homework. Yeah. Stick tight to New York Institute of Finance. Anyone and everyone will hear that from me. Stick tight to Bulkowski. Anyone and everyone will hear that from me. Now, it sounds like just rain on the parade and no one did well. No, we did great. We did great, didn't we? Yes, we've done great. Take a look at Bitcoin in the four hourly. Some of this is just commentary, but I want you guys to know how, how strongly I want to reinforce our participation in the markets. And it's an expectation for other people, right, who have any level of control or authority in the markets. I expect them to do that. I want them to do that because we enjoy what we do. We enjoy what the markets have been, what the opportunities that they bring to us, right? So if there's a, if, if there's a problem with that with anybody, well, I love the markets. I'm not the, uh, you know, change what's, uh, change, occupy what? Occupy Wall Street? What? I love Wall Street. I love the markets. I always have. And I always, I'll just continue to do that. I'll continue to reinforce the technical framework. And I want you guys to have great days. Technically, I want you to have just solid a uh, solid, uh, solid experience with the market. So in line with that, we want to encourage everybody, even if it comes with a little bit of, a uh, little bit of, uh, we say a little bit of uh, critique, technical critique. Someone, hold on. <laughs> someone didn't, someone didn't do, uh, didn't do things right on, on, on the market. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a technical problem in the market. Hold on. Yeah. That's the way, that's, that, that's the last 24, 48 hours with me. What do you mean? There's a technical anomaly in the market? Hold on. Hold on. That's just me, guys. So when it happens, I want to note it when it's, when it's, when it's, uh, it's like a lack of confirmation, essentially, you know, that, that I see in the market. I don't, I, I want to 
I want to participate in solid markets. That's just it, guys. You know me. And it's from the heart. It, it absolutely is. It's not even from the wallet. It's not from the wallet. It's from the heart. So call me a, 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 just name me as you will, but it's from the heart. I love the markets. That's the bottom line. I want them to participate in a way that can encourage additional uh, development and reinforcement technically so that people can have something to rely upon instead of being left to conjecture or speculation. We want to remove uh, the notion that there's manipulation at all and in the markets if in any, uh, to, to, to any greatest extent that we possibly can. And I want to be on the record for reinforcing that at every level with whomever I come into contact with. And you guys just heard that. So um, this is what we expect in the market. If we were to see anomalies in something, i.e. Bitcoin, continually, I'm also on the record, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll change course to the extent that it prohibits our ability to, uh, to, to trade it. I'm a very big believer in uh, and, and definitely knowing the asset that we're going to trade, uh, trade. We prefer definitely to be crypto. I don't want to get into the arguments or the discussion as to whether or not, whether or not you know, we should expect to pay a little bit here or there or, or, or have a lack of, uh, have a lack of uh, predictability because it's so volatile, right? I don't want to get into discussions on hypotheticals and conjecture to reinforce a level of potential manip manipulation. If there are orders on a 20 moving average, a 20 moving average on the daily, they get picked up. Who in their right mind is going to look at truckloads full of orders and say, nope, that's just part of a demand function. It doesn't, per it doesn't belong to the market. Are you, are you crazy? Would we be crazy? Are technicals wrong? Worth asking, is trading view wrong? Is, is every exchange that we've looked at wrong? Are the calculations, do you understand a demand function in the market and the level of suspicion, the level of, uh, guys, problematic, and it's, it, understand it's just a trade, understand what well, we caught it here, understand we still got the short, understand that everything kind of still went okay, except for what? That I have to explain that we were 0.35% off of a 20 moving average where truckloads, truckloads of orders are sitting for, for a demand function. Just, uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> you know, it's just, guys, come on, you know, come on. It, it is an issue, so I bring it up. Does it have to govern and control the day, the week, the next month, the uh, last of the fourth quarter? No. But it's, uh, it's, 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 it's something that you'll have to replay as you look at any adjustments on your charts now. I don't want my charts to adjust. I don't want my technicals to adjust. I don't want to look at different time frames, see different candle wick tops here and there i don't want to see it that's just it guys if we were if we were guys in the markets for no good reason and we were expecting uh, a free lunch here and a free lunch there for the market you know if we're relying on this group to pump or, or that group to pump or guys that ain't us we run a tight tight ship and we enjoy that and so technically i just expect uh, i expect good things and let's just expect them to improve in terms of not getting orders picked up. I don't want to see you guys in that position. So, uh, some days it rains, some days it, it kind of pours, and some days it's, well, <laughs> the game is canceled. The, the baseball game is canceled. I've had to cancel the baseball game. So, I don't want you guys to be disappointed in terms of your technicals. So, we will focus on, right, we'll focus on uh, the framework and the technical uh, proficiencies that, uh, that, that belong to the assets that we will that we will continue to look at. In Bitcoin, we can't complain much, but we can, and we are. So, having said that, it's been about a, a little bit of a discussion. If you'll just take it as a discussion, okay? Uh, how do we beat the, uh, how, do, how do we beat the dynamics in terms of, uh, in, in terms of a 20 hit? Well, we didn't get the, the 20 hit here, right? And so, well, then we're going to rely on a lack of com conformance on a real 20 hit here because really it was just a prior uh, prior uh, guys lateral uh, lateral pickup right so here's where the problem started the party started right back here not hitting the 20 right then you've got a reinforcement for not hitting it again look back to your back testing guys do your uh, your replay and so when you're okay so th this is how the this is how things uh, can go and it's a problem on the map here with orders not getting picked up Someone else would just decide that I guess you just don't need to make that much money. I mean, sure, 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 sure. 
And it almost, it almost reeks of, well, I guess anyone with the insider information. Anybody with the insider of the right order book. Anybody who qualifies can go ahead and get in on this trade. But no, 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 no. No, nah, no, no. You don't need that. You don't need that. Who needs that? That belongs to people who are really, really hard at work in the markets. Oh, it does. I see. I see. And this here, huh? Oh, you know, you, 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 uh, you, you're pushing back. You have to remember what we did here. You guys see how this looks? Just curious. What's the problem right here, not hitting the 20 moving average on the daily? And then what's, what's, what, how's the rationale go? Huh? Well, you got to kind of remember what we did here. Do we really? Well, well, that would be the stupidest thing to possibly reinforce in a market. I mean, just, just to say, you kind of have to remember what we did here. You see, we, we stayed off the 20 moving average here, but what did we do? Well, on this one, we stayed off the 22, but you got to remember, we stayed off of it right here too. So now we're just reinforcing what we just did wrong here. If you're in charge of pricing, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever desk anywhere, whatever kind of minds are going to come up with that, like, hey, look at what we did. Hey, look at what we did again. Um, that's a little bit bolder than me saying, by the way, I'd appreciate some strong technicals in the market. Like, hey, look at what we did wrong. And like, hey, look at it again. Anyway, guys, uh, you know, um, intelligence is, it, it's, it's there. It's an opportunity in life to participate with intelligence or, or you can, you know, you, you, can, you can scream out that you're not intelligent and you can stay off of a 20 moving average on the daily. And then you can say, hey, I know this one didn't work either, but take a look at what we did back here. Like, really? Man, that's nice. That's nice. So we want the markets to flow. We want them to be reliable, right? We just do. We get good moves on Bitcoin for the most part. Apologies uh, to no one. We reinforce the New York Institute of Finance. We reinforce the market bedrock principles. We want this to be a rock and roll, good technical market. We want to participate in it. We're here to win. That's the bottom line. We are here to win. Not just sometimes, not just every other day, not just every other week, not just every other trade. No, we're here to win. That's the bottom line. So I want to bring that champ attitude to anybody and everybody I come into contact with. I come into contact with some interesting people. So I'm on the record with whomever, however, reinforcing yeah, reinforcing champ attitude. That's it. As I've talked to, you guys know this, but I've talked to BlackRock, I've talked to whoever, however, guys, wherever, whatever level. Big deal. But we're on the record. We don't want the free handout. We want the technical to trade. So as you're looking at your technicals, what's one thing that we can look at here? This worked out well. Uh, where do we get down to as well? What do we get down to? And we're just going to start looking at this with a little bit of a cloud of suspicion. 40,000. What's this low here? 40,192. What's this? 40,290. Now, do we have to get here? Do we have to go here? See, this is just an issue. Let's talk about it real quickly and then we'll, I'll go to hit some iron, let some stress out. What did we have here? What did we have? What were we on? What would you say? Okay, well, we didn't hit, we did not hit the daily 20 moving average. For VIP, you guys know, these are big discussions for us. These are not just, well, someone decided to get up on a microphone and just, you know, spill his heart out. No, guys, this is what we do. We want to win. You guys got that. We want to win. Now, uh, what were we on this level? It's hard to see here because we've got a lot of good stuff going on in this chart. But what were we on? Let's see. You can see. Here we go. We were on a fire sale. So if we have to find the catch in the market, guys, if we have to find the catch in the market, it's like, well, we were actually on a four hour fire sale. You know, we were the ones with the answer in the market. You had, you had to be in this back little room. Eh, come on. You had to be in this back little room, right? You had to be back in the VIP Slack room. Yeah. You had to be in the back little room. You had to look at these, these, these little technical overlays and you had to have this special little indicator come on to keep you right above the 20 moving average on the daily. Man, that's crazy. That is literally crazy. It's a fact. Yes, it happened. I'm not responsible for that. Are you guys responsible for that? Fire and eyes will bring you an advantage, right? It will. It shouldn't be that kind of speculative, nuanced advantage to where we can't even really reinforce something in the New York Institute of Finance, the 20 moving average. So that's a head scratcher. Let's just call that, let's chalk it up as a head scratcher. Okay? That's just a head scratcher. We're going to have to look into that. 
what got us? Okay, fire sale for the fire sale on the four hourly was a guidepost. Yeah, definite head scratcher. Lighten the tone up a little bit. But you know, I just I'm I'm on the record too. It's not going to be this back little room, right? Back little room with these 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 these, these special little charts and these special little programs. No, guys, no. Like you gotta you you gotta know what the chopper means when the chopper's thrown up. And no, guys, it, it, we're a New York Institute of Finance guided, back test driven, and we have some advanced calculations. But I just want to reinforce. I want to reinforce all the good positive technical and dynamics in the market that have built the market into being what the market is. It's just, it's in my blood somehow, guys. It just is. It's in my blood. I don't get hot-headed, but it's like, yeah, it's just, that's just, you know, you guys said that's just London. He, he, he loves the market. Just say that, okay? That's it. But fire and ice, that's it. But you see, I don't want to guess on fire and ice. I want to push into the dynamic of the possibility of the four-hour versus the six-hour versus the eight-hour versus the daily versus the weekly versus... You see, seems like perfect because we caught it in the back on the four hourly fire sale. Seems just perfect. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, because I've got a multivariable approach solution set to that equation, which is so much less consistent than the 20 moving average on the daily getting picked up. So in terms of the cloud, and in terms of what, uh, what, what the, uh, the, the save of the day technically as we were to look at the trade, I don't want it to belong to me or just to us. I want it to belong to everybody who wanted to participate in the market. Anyone who wanted to participate in the market deserves that hit. It's not just us. We don't need to be exclusive to that extent. The technicals override, et cetera. We still have a confluence, a nice confluence. No big deal. That's just where, uh, where the, the, you know, that's my heart and mind in terms of the market in terms of how we participate. And it's a good discussion in the fourth quarter. We'll remember that we had it. At this point, you have to say, well, it's a lot of talk for a, for a, for a standard open, the New York open, but what is it? We're going to remember that we had it, aren't we? Instead of it being a glitch, and I do this sometimes, we'll talk about something, we'll reinforce something, and not to be a loud mouth, not to be, uh, not to be disappreciative or, or, or lack uh, common decorum or class or dignity or peace of mind or calm in terms of a presentation of, of, of just a, a generalized complaint in terms of a technical that would work out or not. No, we just want to be on point. That's it. We want to win. All right. And uh, from all of you in VIP, uh, the suggestion box is continually open, constantly open. It never closes. I want to hear your ideas. I want to see your pages out of the New York Institute of Finance book. How do we reinforce technical authority in the markets? I want to see uh, guys, you excel in the markets, and that's my own. I want to see us excel in the markets, and I don't want it just to belong to us. That's it. I don't want it to be exclusive to where there's no, you guys know, to where there's no real solution, there's no real answer, and other people are driven away from trading what you successfully trade, because it's not about whether or not we successfully trade it, you know? It's no, I want it to be a well-regarded, uh, disciplined endeavor, technically, that uh, can be shared by literally anybody and everybody who's willing to put the work in. That's just, that's, that's my... Uh, that's, that, that's my, uh, that, that's my last comment. And I hope that's well received. It's just from the heart. It just is. And I can speak about the market from the heart. I just can. So, uh, in terms of that, if you're having technical issues, time frame to time frame or asset to asset, let's start with a journey on altcoins. If you're having a technical issue on altcoins, surprise, surprise, they're low liquidity. They're just low liquidity, right? Uh, so in terms of that, just low liquidity in the form of your being able to or not to maintain a position, okay? They're going to react typically more, kick you around a lot more. There are ways to work around that, but they can be a little more painful. We can talk about it as we get into 2024. So Bitcoin, we would like to see the technicals. We like to see it happen, guys. And so uh, in terms of our over-under, now this is uh, our over-under. I'm just going to say we have threshold bases price bases that in terms of being operational or otherwise, God forbid, huh? You guys know, God forbid, you know this, huh? God forbid anybody tune in and listen to what all we're talking about and decide, man, this is boring. I got to go. All right. All right. All right. Now, what do we do? You guys know, not for said reason, but uh, nothing was irrelevant. I'll say that. But what are we doing? We're long over, we're short under. Yeah, indeed. Indeed, we're long over, we're short under. Okay, what were we at 40, 
One, we were long over, short under. Okay? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Because we were over under at 44, right? And Bitcoin has a wonderful way of, you guys just know this, has a wonderful way of interacting with traders to get them psychologically amped up. Let's do uh, 46,000. Let's do 44. We're going to do 43. And let's do uh, 42,000. I think that'll put us in, let me change 42 to 45. Uh, let's just do that. Now, as you look at these, uh, these specific levels here, uh, the important part is this. If you can discipline yourself, and now this you can do. Technicals aside, assuming your liquidity function is not being, uh, not being harassed, okay? Looking at this, in terms of the feature set to the upside, the most important thing is if you can orient yourself and take notes big time on this, take notes, literally, if you can orient yourself and as you're going up into this equation and there's just no end in sight towards establishing an over under and being ready for this kind of a move, who's not ready for this kind of a move? Guys, 99% of the market participants, they're just not. I, I will definitely argue that the majority, majority guys, the vast majority of people did not catch this short uh, the way that you were prepared psychologically to catch it. So understand it's not as much fun it's not as popular when we're grinding to the upside and just moving and moving and moving. We have upside targets to continually discipline and reinforce the fact, hey, if this is it, if this is it, we're short under. It's just not, uh, it, it is not a popular way to approach. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good until what? You betcha. You betcha. Until you catch it. Boom. It's beautiful, right? So, when we lay out levels, when you see this CPI price basis, when you see that, uh, I just want you to reinforce, uh, I want you to reinforce it uh, to the extent that you can. Okay, reinforce that that's an over under opportunity. Okay, it just is. And how do I have this laid out in terms of, uh, let me see this, uh, uh, this real quickly in the bottom, just to add into uh, custom price action indicator, triple target. Okay, custom price action indicator. And we'll go through a uh, variety of naming, uh, et cetera. But as we'll, as we'll look at it, if you're going to approach things and start to execute up and over, down and under, first of all, you're going to catch some shorts that you otherwise are just incapable of catching because you're always oriented looking up. Okay. You're going to catch some shorts that you're otherwise never going to catch. Okay. You'll have a threshold parameter. And I do, I back off because, uh, because, uh, and this is the mid-level zone. This is kind of the most unpopular zone here in the middle. And you start to ask, well, do I need another level in the, in the middle here? You, you certainly, you can have, you can have another level. Um, and when you get into this zone, if you didn't catch this move, this is where this becomes painful. And you know this, you guys know, it's like, well, now we're in the middle. Now we're directionally oriented. What are you? Well, we're over and we're what? Yeah, we are. And we're under. As a matter of just absolute fact. Um, so within the swing dynamics, within the reinforced mechanisms that we see here in terms of the top level, thank you guys for letting me talk a little bit, just technically. You guys know how much I love the market. It's just, it's what I do for a reason. It's because I love it. It just is. Not because I'm a loud mouth, not because I want to attract attention or tell anyone what to do. I just want to reinforce with everybody technical participation in the market. I just do because I love it. I love the market. And it's all, it all comes from good. I promise. I promise. I come by it honestly, guys. I just uh, I love the market. So looking at this level at the 42, you can just see, man, that's a nice short. Now, we know that what? We were just at 42. We were just up at 42. What does our momentum look like? Let's take a look at our momentum. We had some, uh, we had some issues. Let's see this real quickly. VIP, you know, VIP what, guys? Uh, fourth quarter in the house, huh? Fourth quarter rocking and rolling. A uh, little bit of a momentum. Uh, display in terms of red is going to be uh, red. Blue is actually going to be in line with our cap line, but that is going to be, those are the strong features now. So we're getting some uh, flex here in the four hour, six hour, eight hour daily. Uh, that's a big deal, right? Uh, not exactly looking as strong. The issue with momentum is they'll sometimes roll over and then they'll start to rebound as you're down, down with it. You guys know that. So sometimes it'll continue like RSI. Sometimes it'll, it'll push further uh, in terms of, uh, let's say a rebound or a reversal, it'll, it'll want to rebound or reverse. Uh, so 
You're finding this if you're operating continually at levels that the sweet spot was right there. Man, darn it. It just is. Fact, fact. You're finding it doesn't feel right to, to do what? It's like, man, come on. It just doesn't feel right. Because what? Because I want to go up. I want this to break out and go up. But what does it mean if you're trying to break out and go up? If, you're, if you have a level that needs to be broken to break out and go up, okay, if you're efficiently, if you're efficiently executing and you're able to enter on your asset, right, with a stop, et cetera, this is just, this is go time. You know that. And we're plugged in right now for some good technical reasons into being long over, short under, right? Buy over, sell under. That's it. Buy over, sell under strategy. Why are we like that? Because we want to get paid on the busts and on, 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 on the deliveries. That's just it. On the major market deliveries, we would like to take advantage of, of those opportunities, those trade ops. We call them trade ops, trade opportunities. That's it, guys. Just shorthand. Looking at the move up and over, though, did we engage long here? We didn't. So the trade op was boom down from the 42. And now you're seeing well with this pickup here. And this is the difficulty if you've got, and we know this, but you've got trade A, B, C, and D. Maybe you have trade uh, just uh, A and B. You've got trade one and two uh, and three and four, right? You've got a flash. You've got a, a micro flash. You've got a little bit of a carry. You've got a little bit of longer carry, maybe into a day or so. And then you've got one that you can just toss. All right now, I, I, I bring that up because to the extent that you decided, let's say you're over under your specific 41, you know the solution here and it is what? It is fine. I'm off to the races with trade number one. I'm off to the races with trade number two, and I'm off to the races with trade number three, right? Trade number one, trade number two, and trade number three. Okay, why? Because I don't know. I got to take trade number one right here. You know that? Yeah. I got to cover this kind of action to the extent that I get up and over with trade number one right here. I got a book. We got a book, something here. We got to make some profit. We got to cover this strategy. You know that, huh? Up and through what? Up and through, man, it's trade number two. Well, I, I got to kind of, I, I got I to gotta take. I'm at a new level. So the cash out principle in terms of, no, it's an all long. It's an all short. To the extent that you're able to accommodate in a one, two, three approach, yeah. And you're able to say, okay, my third, that's a speculative play. And to be truly comfortable with up and over, bam, to next level up and over, okay. And then what about three if we don't get up and over? You got it right, boom. It zeroes out. But you still had your first, you still had your second in play. We agree? The strategy is there, right? We have trades one, two, three, initiate on up and over. One, we need to make some cash, right? We kind of need to float this strategy up and around. Two, all right, we take it to the next level. And your three is what? Your three is your up and over two, potentially what? And this is where you get into some execution complications, potentially is what? Okay, so my three carries up and over with what? Technically, if we're gonna count this a four, or do we know we restart one, two, three? Okay, now, yeah. And then we're carrying what? We're carrying this and we're carrying this. Okay, you got it. So what is the goal here? And this is where things can get complicated or they can be simplified, okay? In, in terms of looking at the overall equation in play, we're talking about this because it works. That's just the bottom line. And it's, it's uh, uh, to the extent that execution and liquidity are issues to the extent that uh, dynamics of, we've, we've, we've gone through this last several weeks. What I'll reinforce is the following. This was a nice level. It just was this morning. To the extent that you see this in terms of a CPI, I just, uh, guys, uh, custom price uh, action, uh, just custom price level. What, what do you guys want to call this? We'll, we'll call it, we call it CPI because of CPI, essentially. And I want to create some an acronym because it's such an important dynamic and has been so important. Almost out of respect, CPI did extraordinarily well for traders. You guys know that. 
an up and over, down and under. It's also a very critical strategy as we look at like bull runs. Everything is running, right? Yeah. So let's look at uh, the dynamic of multiple trade executions and look at those in terms of well, how would you establish the carry? And I just encourage you guys to continue to do exactly what you're doing. Let's, let's, let's close it out there. Continue to do exactly what you are doing because uh, what we're doing, it, it does, it, it, it's working. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a different level of discipline. It just is. Uh, and to the extent that you're encountering a bit of a personal hesitation to get involved, uh, guys, and to trade something over or under, just remind yourself, it's just like a pattern. It literally is the same thing as a pattern. And it's nice when we have that confluence with the pattern. So all the bulls who were up here without a stop loss, it hurt. You guys know, it just did. If you're in flux from here and you start to say, well, should I have cashed out the entirety of said positions here? And you're starting to balance that in form of an equation, in the form of an equation with looking at your execution cost, your stops, looking at your liquidity ability for it to hold that probability of yeah, your orders even being allowed to really enter and carry. See, that's the part of the equation that becomes very difficult to stomach when we are making the assessments of our ability to function in the market. Like, hold on. We're supposed to be in a highly liquid asset. We're supposed to hold our orders. We are technical traders. So we have an expectation, yes, we have an expectation of participation in the market provided and given and dependent upon these technicals. So that's why, that's why, uh, that's why I shift sideways a little bit in terms of the technical orientation and what that means to us uh, in terms of a profit equation. And that's, uh, I would imagine that that is clearly known, right? Clearly known. And we talked about, uh, we, what did we talk about yesterday uh, briefly? It's, it's time, uh, uncertainty. Uh, those things in the market can cause, uh, can cause uh, some stress to traders. It's documented. It's, it's literally, literally, uh, it's beyond dispute, right? Time, uh, time. And what do we throw into it? Really risk, right? Time uh, and uh, and we'll just we'll stick to the basics. You guys listened to yesterday's stream if you'd like to, um, but uncertainty along with time uh, is is a big deal when you're dealing with money, right? You've got your money involved. Well, I'll talk about you got your money involved. You've got uh, uncertainty, right? And it's just when you're looking at money uh, or time, uncertainty, and money. We'll just I'm going to write it down. If you're looking at your time in the market. When you combine time and you involve uh, money and you involve uncertainty, if I can do this, I want you to think about how these, uh, how these work together. What kind of a psychological equation can you, do, can you imagine when you're taking people's time? You're involving their money and you're subjecting them to uncertainty. It becomes a very difficult equation to look at. We talked about this yesterday. Listen to yesterday's, yesterday's uh, stream if you want to. But that's a very difficult equation to suggest that people just go ahead and, 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 and hammer into. So uh, this here is where technicals come into play. And if they don't, then we won't. We can't. We can't. Um, the, the, the uncertainty, that dynamic is, is mitigated by technical reinforcement as it's presented itself for hundreds of years in the markets, right? So we want to reinforce that as a bottom line. I'll encourage you all to continue to look long up and over, short down and under when we have a specific, a specific uh, level in play. Treat it like a breakout, no problem. But don't just be so oriented in terms of bullish or otherwise that you're just blind to the opportunity what was this hit from, uh, what was this? We got a real lackluster CPI, 1.76%. So Bitcoin's trading, Bitcoin is trading. Um, let's just dig in the back guys. Let's, let's go get his fourth quarter. You guys know that. And uh, I'm sorry that we didn't get a clean pickup on Bitcoin on the 20 moving average on the daily. I'm sorry that we didn't get that. And I think that's unfortunate as we're having a great quarter and everything else that we have to uh, yeah, digress and look at a uh, technical deficiency. I think it's important. Uh, it's 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 uh, important for us to recognize it's a technical deficiency. And I just hope, and this is where the good hope is, to the extent that there's any any sort of like a malfeasance on an exchange or broader basis, maybe there's some good guys somewhere that'll look into stuff like that. 
maybe there's a, there are some good guys out there somewhere who can look into something like that. Be like, hold on. Bitcoin should, should be hitting, right? Should be hitting. Yeah? Especially in this, guys, you have to say, especially given the fact that uh, Zhao, uh, C. Zhao, uh, Binance is, is, is under how many, what is his payment right now? I'm just curious, guys. I'm, I'm really curious on this. How, how, how big is the fine he's got to pay right now? Oh, how big is the fine that he has to pay? Who was just allowed to, to trade at the 20 moving average perfectly? Or got their orders picked up or otherwise? If it's a character and cat like that who just got the ability to trade and we don't, because we're not on the quote-unquote inside like that, then there are some major issues, major issues. More than just a loud mouth in the morning wanting to, ooh, you know, him and haw about a, a 20 moving average and replay 20 moving average daily hit. See how we were just slightly off. Brings into question, guys. You got CZ about to, you know, hammer down some cash to save himself, right? Big time. So this is when we like to see the tentacles in a market that's already under a, an extreme amount, an extreme amount of, yeah, of oversight. Wouldn't this be the time that we would expect the market to behave perfectly? So hopefully, or just wonderfully, technically, properly, technically, to behave properly, technically, yes. So in that context, I hope there are some good guys out there, some good guys. Hmm. Who, who, who are reinforcing the markets. Let's just say that, who are reinforcing the markets and looking at whether or not, like, uh, just, you know, I don't want to ask, like, is, you know, is, is, is this all bridled around a fine payment to somebody else for somebody? It's just not what we want to, uh, that, those are the kind of questions that we want to uh, dig into while we're just having a great time trading. And you guys know, we could have a great time doing a lot of different businesses. We're competent people. We could have a great time doing a lot of different businesses. We're having a great time trading. So we need that technical reinforcement to continue to enjoy this business. And we hope, uh, we hope that that is a part of your, uh, your daily, let's just say uh, your daily, guys, uh, what, what drives you in the market, right? What's in your heart in the market? And that's a good thing to be on the record that that's in. Uh, that's on the books with us. So if you do, if you are listening and you need technical reinforcement, I'm going to say this, you don't need it from me. If you're just listening to this for the first time, I want you to go buy the New York Institute of Finance published book by John J. Murphy. I want you to look at the technical analysis of the financial markets. Please go do that. Do yourself a favor. It won't make you a pro, but it'll show you where Wall Street goes to school, some of the stuff that they, they focus on. I want to encourage you as well, if you want technical reinforcement in the market, go buy the encyclopedia of, of I don't get paid for any of this stuff, guys. Go buy the encyclopedia of chart patterns by Thomas Bukowski and read through that a uh, thousand plus page book, the highlights that you like and start to expose yourself to the authorities in the technical, uh, in the technical uh, domain there, uh, the recognized front runners. And uh, to the extent that uh, you need that technical reinforcement from me, all I'm ever going to do is, is point you back to, 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 to those, that level of an authority in the market. Maybe some additional calculations that are used on some, uh, and that's just kind of in-house for some stuff that we do, right? with fire and ice or capital control line or things like that, uh, fusion machine learning. Uh, and and uh, to the extent that you're, uh, that you're new and you're looking uh, for a great uh, trade group, uh, just reinforce, uh, get those books, spend some time with those books. And in terms of the, the incoming year, uh, we're really gonna, I think, filter out. We want some people who are, who are really dedicated towards, uh, towards you know, some operation and, and, and showing some, some, some strong interest level beyond just wanting to be in another, uh, you know, signal call group. That's, that's not what we do, guys. Uh, you can take a look at machine learning if you want to, uh, just in terms of this for machine learning. I'm on combined uh, machine learning on balance volume uh, is, is my alpha, just so that you know. And uh, my display is combined and it's, it is normalized. So this is something in terms of machine learning. We'll go through this next year, but you'll see once ML kicks in, this is just on the five minute, and we're, we're gone, we've gone... Uh, we, we've, we've gone into the red, right? Uh, maintaining this up and green, guys, it's going to be a red or green just based upon bullish or bearish. We'll go through this. And that'll be one of the major goals of 2024. Uh, but once we lose that, once we lose the, the bullish nature here, you just see there's some nice shorts in here, right? So you can do it by level. You can also do it by machine learning. There's a lot of different things we can look at. 
Uh, but once we lose that bullish, uh, we can call it momentum at this point. It's, it's simple stuff. Momentum doesn't have to get into, you know, hedge funds, calculatives, et cetera, to the extent that we can or we do, right? But looking at the momentum, I just want to encourage you all to continue to have a disciplined approach in the market. Continue to look at your trade levels and you're just going to do great. Between now and the end of the quarter, you're going to do fantastic. We wanted to break out this morning. What didn't we get? We didn't get a breakout. That's okay. That's all right. We will continue to roll into... Uh, we'll continue to roll into Bitcoin. We're going to be what? If we can get there, if we can get there. Now, I'm sure we're going to have a perfect hit today. On the, don't even try it. Don't even try it, huh? Yeah, what is it? Uh, first time, uh, shame on... Uh, I'm going to say, first time, shame on you. Second time, shame on you. Third time, shame on you. Here's the bottom line, huh? We're going to reinforce the technicals in the market. We change that old adage. In good, uh, in good spirit and fun, but wanting to really be able to succeed in what we put our uh, time and attention into. I want that for you guys. I really want that for anybody who's a pure heart in the market. I just want that, really. I, I really, really want that. In terms of uh, the, in terms of the function here, kind of a mid-level, but we're going to be looking at forty-one thousand over under. Is the bottom line. Uh, we may have some complication with the specific. Uh, and it might be a nice opportunity for us to look at that, and it was yesterday, with the 20 moving average daily, over under, and uh, over under 20 moving average daily, and, and that 41,000 uh, threshold, which, which did rebound quite well. This, this, this traded extremely well. That was a nice, uh, these were some nice moves. So we're getting the volatility a little lackluster on the technical performance. We'll note such, and we'll continue to dig in, guys, as hard and as strong and, and, and as well as we do. And the group dynamic will, uh, will continue to pick up and let this just be something. Let it be a little bit of a wake-up call for us in terms of who we are and what we reinforce. It's not the trash technicals. It's not the trash investments. It's not the get rich quick and this and that. It is the bedrock fundamental of what we want to see uh, propagated in the markets. We want to have awesome, great markets with awesome, great assets uh, such as Bitcoin. And we want, uh, we want it to be an awesome place for traders uh, to hang their hat and to enjoy themselves. And that's why we are at it as hard as we are, as passionate as we are. So uh, let's dig into the details. It is December 12th. We have a few more weeks, a few more weeks, and we'll have some additional trade-offs like this in terms of uh, that line. Congrats to any VIP who reinforced this 42,000 because that's a nice short to start the day. We agree? It's a nice short to start the day. Boom. 1.8% to the downside. Congrats to all the VIP who are trading. Special shout out to... Uh, to uh, we'll say uh, to Venus, congrats on uh, all the success this year. It's been very good. I want to say a special shout out to Tony. Tony in Australia, we're praying for your mom. I heard uh, that uh, last night you sent me the information that she's uh, been in and out. So just for your family, um, and especially as those issues pertain to anyone and everyone in VIP, uh, it's a very heartfelt group, and we want the best for each and every one of you. And if you need anything from me, you guys know you just let me know and see how I can be a part of a solution. Uh, definitely a uh, solution-oriented uh, group, and that's just um, that's how we bring it. Special shout-out in the back as well to, uh, to Luke, and uh, shout-out to uh, J-Mac. J-Mac, hope you're doing well. To AJ Crypto, had a great opportunity to uh, chit-chat with you, AJ, uh, just for a minute. See you on the screen now. Uh, shout-out and hope everything is going well on your trips. We're excited about 2024. It's going to be a landmark year. Luke's up there now in the corner. Luke, nice to see you. Shout-out to the family. Uh, Steve-O in the back, Steve. Hope you're doing well in trading. Nice to see you uh, trading, and that's uh, going to be J-Mac up there on the top. Guys, we'll have a few holiday streams, and they won't include complaints from me about technicals on any, any kind of a market maker desk. There's Tony up top. Deal? So, good for me to get this out of my system today on a little bit of lackluster technical non-hit exactly. We were off by 0.33%, and that 0.33% is money. You know that, that 0.33% is money. You guys take away, if anything, from the discussion this morning. If not, listen to it. If you didn't listen to it, listen to it. 0.33% is, is money, guys. So uh, let's dig in uh, in the back. Uh, Mo Atlas, nice to see you there as well. And we will talk to you guys soon. This is London with Bitcoin Spike and VIP Trader. Let's go. Let's focus on the technicals. Let's re-harness into uh, the technicals. And just know Bitcoin is being a little bit... A little bit flaky. We'll notice that. Huh? A little bit flaky. We'll dig into the details. I'm going to go hit the iron. This is London with Bitcoin Spike and VIP Trader. We got 42 up and over. We got 
uh, 41, okay, just below us in terms of that technical, uh, technical uh, reinforced framework. Shout out to our dev team in uh, UK and beyond. We'll talk to you soon, guys. Take care. Have a wonderful day. This is London with Bitcoin Spike and VIP Trader. Thank you.